I'm Michael Fix and in this video I wanted to talk to you about the Maton Michael Fix guitar. Since 2004 when this guitar was introduced I have been asked many times about the, this instrument and what is my input into it and uh, why did I choose the things that I chose. It was clear that there was a lot of interest in this topic and I've never actually created a video to address this. Seems like a good opportunity to do that. So I hope you find some useful information here. I'm not going to play very much at all. It's more uh, telling you about the guitar, what makes it different from the other Maton guitars. Because one of the most common questions I receive is, what's the difference between the Michael Fix guitar, the Tommy Emanuel guitar, the 808 Customs, all, all that kind of thing. I can't really answer all of that for you, but I can tell you at least about this guitar and why I chose it. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory first of all how it came into being. In 2003 in January I was playing at the Tamworth Country Music Festival and Maton had an annual showcase there and I was performing at one of those events and as I was leaving I met a guy called Alan Seyman from Melbourne. Alan at the time had set up a business as the Maton guitar distributor in Italy. And he asked me if I would be interested in coming to Italy with him, uh, playing some guitar festivals, some trade shows, doing some workshops, that kind of thing. It was like a dream come true for me. Italian food, Italian wine, guitars, perfect. As the plans fell into place for that tour, Alan got in touch with me and said he had an idea. How about we introduce a new Maton guitar to the audiences in Italy? I thought that was a fantastic idea and he asked me what would I want in my dream guitar. Well to be asked that that was like a dream come true. The idea of having a signature guitar was was so far off my radar it's not something I ever imagined would, would happen to me. So he asked me what would I like in my own guitar and it was a really tough question to answer because at the time I was playing a mate on 808 just the standard factory 808 guitar which I really loved. I loved the pickup system. I loved the small body guitar. Prior to that, I was playing a Dreadnought and I was finding the Dreadnought was a little sore on my shoulders after a while. So I liked the small body guitar. So I got to thinking about what would I want in a custom model guitar. So the first thing I, I suggested was I want it to be an 808 size guitar, so small body. The second was the cutaway and at the time, in 2004, Maton didn't have uh, 808s as standard with a cutaway. So it was kind of like a new idea, a new, a new model. And I thought that visually that would set it apart from the other guitars as well. I had to think about the, the two main types of timber that Maton was using, uh, Blackwood and Queensland Maple. I ended up going with Queensland Maple because I'm led to believe that Maple is a brighter timber and I thought it would make the guitar a bit punchy and I'm thinking at the time this is primarily going to be a stage guitar. I'm thinking of my dream acoustic stage guitar. It's going to be amplified and what are the main, main problems with amplifying acoustic guitars? There's feedback usually in the bass. I wanted to be able to control the bass so my reasoning was if I'm on stage the amplification is doing the work. If I need a little more bass, I'm just going to reach for the pickup system and just push the bass up a bit. Even if acoustically the guitar may lack a little bass compared to Blackwood. So I went with the, the Queensland Maple. And um, this is my first guitar, the one I got in 2004. And if you're wondering what this ugly bit of plastic is on the back, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just left over from when I was using it on touring days back then. Uh, I was wearing a jacket that had these plastic buttons that would click on the back of the guitar and the microphone in the guitar could hear everything so especially things clicking on the back so this is sort of a padded plastic thing. It's I just left it there. This is the original guitar from 2004. There are a few changes that I've made to this guitar. I, I was trialing a set of high ratio machine heads and I've just left those on there. There was actually nothing wrong with the Grovis that comes standard on these, but I, I was just trying these out to see how they worked. This guitar has been refretted and I've had stainless steel frets put in this, which I really love. The idea that it'll never need another refret really appeals to me and, and the sound is so consistent. The other thing about this one is when I first got it, the intonation wasn't perfect. I'm really fussy about intonation on guitars. I got my Luthier Andrew Armstrong 
to create an oversized saddle. It gives a little more room to, to create adjustments for each individual string. So we have an 808 size body. We've got a cutaway and I selected Queensland maple for the back and sides. And I got thinking about the fingerboard normally uh, rosewood fingerboards but I always loved the look and the feel of ebony and one of my favorite guitars as a as a young player was a Gibson Les Paul custom a black beauty and I loved the 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 way the black fingerboard looked very elegant so I thought it would just be a nice touch to have an ebony fingerboard on the guitar and the final thing was a purely cosmetic and that is I requested that the top of the guitar have very very little tint in it so that the guitar is almost white it's like a really light color with the idea that the, the black ebony fingerboard the the white body of the guitar it would just look really elegant it looked really classy and I kind of pictured a scene where you have a row of matons hanging on a wall in a music store and they're all going to kind of look fairly similar but there's going to be one that jumps out at you a little visually now it was a nice idea and what I discovered when the guitars are new they do look really light and beautiful but as the guitar ages and it doesn't take that long only after about six months or so I noticed that the, the timber starts to darken and, and it's got this kind of golden yellow hue to it now which which look I really don't mind I love the way that guitars age like humans the color changes you, you get lines you get a few marks you know it's a uh, life's journey is on our faces on our skin and on our instruments as well so i really don't mind the fact that it changes color with age it's all part of the the joy of owning a, a natural solid timber instrument so that's the original one from 2004 by 2007 i, I was playing a, a real lot and i noticed I was starting to have some aches and pains in my neck and shoulders. You know, it's one of those things we guitar players have to uh, manage and playing guitar where you've got your shoulder a little twisted out of alignment, it's not great for posture. And I asked Maiden if they would build me a thin body guitar. And this is what they sent me. I received this one in 2007 and it looks pretty much identical with the difference that it's a much thinner body. They have a series of guitars in, in all shapes and sizes called the Performer Series and it's the thin body and I just loved the way this just kind of fitted under my arm a little better and it was really comfortable to play and it eased some of those problems that I was having. And um, I also put stainless steel frets on this guitar. It became my main touring guitar for many years since 2007. Now, acoustically, it's a little quiet. It doesn't have a lot of bass. And so last year, I got in touch with my luthier and asked whether he would like to try an experiment to see if we could get this instrument to open up a little more acoustically. And so what Andrew Armstrong did, and this might be the subject for another video, he, uh, he did some shaping on the braces of this guitar. You know, these um, the Matons come out of the factory as a fairly solid guitar, and it's one of the things I, I love about them. They're built quite strong. I can travel around the world with, with it. Um, I can move in and, in and out of different temperature zones from cold to hot climates. The guitars don't move. They stay in tune. They can take a lot of abuse. They can, uh, they're just a really strong, rugged instrument. But what you sacrifice is um, a little bit of tone. You know, the lighter the instrument is and the, the lighter the top is and the braces, the more fragile it is, but also the more open the sound. Since this one had been retired as my main guitar, I thought, let's try an experiment. Let's see if we could um, change the sound of the guitar a little bit. Andrew was indeed able to, to lower the, the fundamental frequency of this instrument. And, and it, it just sounds a bit sweeter and more open now still a very enjoyable guitar to play. So I was using this instrument for uh, quite a few years, up until two years ago, 2018. I'd been noticing as I travel around, particularly in Europe, if I went into a music store and they were stocking Maton and I'd see um, a Michael Fix guitar, of course I'd have to go up and try it out and, and see how it was performing. 
And I noticed in recent years that uh, the, the new ones straight off the shelf were sounding fabulous. You know, and there's always a, a break in time with an acoustic guitar. It takes um, a little time, a lot of playing, and you notice the guitar opens up and starts to sweeten in tone. And these brand new ones, they already sounded warmer and deeper. And I got in touch with Mayton and I said, listen, I'd love to have one of the, the new factory models. Um, now these are, uh, I mentioned factory models. These are not custom shop models. These are all standard factory guitars. So in 2018, I went down to the factory in Melbourne and selected this guitar, which is now my main stage guitar. So it looks a little newer, a little lighter than the other two. Still has the original frets, but I am going to put stainless steel frets on this before I start touring again. But this is exactly the guitar I was hoping for. It's like the refinement of the, the early model. And I've got the AP5 Pro system on, on all three of these instruments. And this one has, a, has some punch to it. It has something kind of special for me, to my ear. And uh, so this has become my, my main stage guitar and I love it. It, uh, it has been broken uh, by baggage handlers in Europe. The whole back of the guitar was split in two places and the braces were cracked. Um, uh, that's another story. Don't, don't really need to go into that now, but it has been repaired. It was an emergency re repair by Dirk Jungblut, a German luthier. Did a wonderful job and, and the guitar lives to fight another day. Anyway, as I mentioned at the start, I'm often asked about the different mate on guitars and which one should people choose. When it comes to choosing a guitar, look, really, it's the guitar that makes you keep coming back to it and picking it up and, and wanting to play, that's the right guitar for you. There are so many beautiful instruments around, but I did want to share with you a bit of the backstory of the Michael Fix mate on guitar and to explain to you some of the choices that I made about this guitar. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you have more questions or comments, uh, I do read them all. And if you have ideas for future videos that you'd like to see me make, please suggest them in the comments section as well. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank mm -hmm. you.